Welcome to the Vibrant Stories series from the East Ayrshire Vibrant Communities Communities team. This is Stewarton, a small town in East Ayrshire, Scotland. A place known for its social gatherings and their festivals. And in the year 2020, they were looking forward to the future. Then everything changed. New rules arrived. We stayed indoors. Life changed. People rallied in new ways, creating hope together. During days of uncertainty and fear, some people stood up to care for others, helping their community. My name's Claire Wiley and I helped administer the Stewarton Coronavirus Support Group. Um, there was 35 of us and we helped people in need throughout the town, throughout the pandemic. Hey, I'm Roddy. Uh, I'm involved in the Stewarton Volunteers. I've been doing it since uh, April or May time. Uh, I finished my last job last October, September time. Uh, and I decided I would take a year out. I was in the fortunate position I could take a year out and do some volunteering. Well, wow, I didn't think coronavirus would be something that happened in my lifetime and the impact it's had on the country. I didn't think that would happen in my lifetime. Uh, but you could see it was escalating from overseas, from east to west, it was coming our way. So it was almost inevitable. It was probably a bit of disbelief. It was coming from the east and then it landed in Italy and I just kind of, it almost seemed unreal, um, as if it wasn't going to affect us. Um, I didn't feel scared at any time. Um, I was more scared about how it was going to affect sort of the elderly. Um, but yeah, I think disbelief was probably my main reaction. The Facebook group was already established before I got involved and there was just one day there was a lot of um, quite negative talk and there was a lot of fear. People were really scared to begin with. Um, so I really just wanted to get it under control um, and then someone else who was an administer the administrator sorry, asked me to get involved, so at that point in time um, I took over um, and then I started to organise things. Like a lot of people said, yeah, I'll help, I'll help, but I started collating names, getting a Facebook group uh, set up, telephone numbers coming up with a sort of action plan um, to get things going. Hey, my name's Robert Whiteford. Um, I've lived in Stewarton more or less all my life. Um, retired six years ago? No, ten, eight years ago good number of years ago. So I do work for various community groups around the town. This is my wife Jan. So the two of us have been doing the watering of the plants for most of the most of the summer. Um, and as I say we just try and do as many things as we can. So I say born and brought up in the area and always been working for the for the community. Um, well basically this is where I step back a wee bit because of my age um, health-wise and all the rest of it. So rather than going into this, I stepped back a wee bit and let Claire um, take over the, the COVID-19 group. Um, so both of us been over the 70 mark, kind of thing. <laughs> um, we decided to step away from it a bit. Worked in the background, doing a lot of the unseen work. But um, to say, still being there, but not at the front where we, where we usually are. I think it was really just the fact that on a daily basis, you know, um, if I needed help, people were crying out to help me. We had a WhatsApp group eventually 
Um, and I would say, you know, could someone do a prescription? And within five minutes, I'd have three people fighting to help me. Um, just, I think, realising the impact that small things did for people, like walking dogs. The sort of, there was a lady who was sheltering, um, I think she was immunosuppressed, the difference that that made to her. Um, and just the, the sort of, the sense of camaraderie amongst the volunteers um, was just brilliant. Again, I just like the banter, you know, the interaction in a group and all that, you know. Aye. Obviously, you know, be, you know, you like to kind of see a bit of smile and a bit of laugh. But obviously you put, everybody puts the hard work in. I think, I think the collective hope is just being there, being able to, you know, support people, you know, be it from, like, like I've seen, you know, be it prescription, be it, you know, garden tidies or even some of the guys have done, you know, a, a lot of work, you know, just to doing the food parcels like myself. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Barry Skade, I've just started a new job, uh, Spark of Genius, working with kids with ADHD. AD problems, uh, behavioural problems and that, so and that's my new job now at Night Shift. Well, I just found that the community need the help. Uh, the old ones weren't out and about, so they needed somebody to deliver stuff for them, so I decided to help. The older people, they reacted with joy in their face, uh, absolute gratefulness, uh, what we were doing for them, delivering, I was delivering meals um, every, every day, so uh, they were happy. Oh, it feels as if you've, you've done something good for them. Yeah, I mean, people are obviously asked for assistance, so uh, I found very welcoming, nice people uh, needing assistance, and the uh, volunteers have been happy to oblige. Nothing's too much trouble, we'll always find a way. It was incredible the outpouring of offers of help and the fact that people <clears throat> really looked out for each other. It can be a good and a bad thing living in a small town because people tend to know your business but my mum always said you need that nosy neighbour so people really did look out for their neighbours as I say. I took a couple of phone calls about people concerned about neighbours with dementia. Um, a lot of people would um, phone and say I'm really worried about my grass, everybody's getting their grass cut and a lot of people helped with stuff like that as well, little things because we were really fortunate and the weather was so good at the beginning um, so everybody was out you know like doing projects around the house but little things to that like little things like that really mattered to people um, who took a pride in their you know their house's appearance and stuff um, just the fact that people were willing to put their self at risk because it, it was you know and it still is an ongoing concern um, was so selfless um, I just thought that was that was fantastic. You know, we were going. You know, um, the people who uh, drove around town every day, they were delivering food to 45, 50 people a day every day, and they were just like you know young young people who took that decision upon themselves to do that and to commit to that for almost five months is a great testament to their character. Um, yeah, I was just I was blown away, and I'm still blown away by the the offers of support that I get. I just see myself as just a wee, you know, just a bit of a cog in the whole thing, you know, just being there, you know, help with the food parcels, pick up uh, for the, the supermarkets and stuff like that, and just, you know, and that, that's the best thing you can get, just a smile, a simple thank you, or even a couple of times I've been to places I think there's maybe been a crosswire, you end up just striking up a conversation with somebody 15, 20 minutes has passed like that, but just, there's, there's a connection of sorts, you know, just you know, a bit of, how could I put it, you know, that is a bit of community spirit there, you know. People, people have, you know, I suppose it's in the older generation, they feel it a lot harder, you know, and just, you know, they've not got that kind of circle around about them, you know. Um, there was a really sad day, so um, Hamilton Gardens distributed food. Um, on a daily basis and there was one day we couldn't get an answer from a lady um, who'd actually lost her husband to the virus um, so I offered to take the food up um, and I managed to get a hold of her um, and she was just so lonely um, and she was really struggling to deal with the fact that her husband went into hospital one night and then didn't come back um, and I think the thing that everybody struggled with is a lack of connection. I couldn't even hug her. I had to stand about six feet away from her 
and she didn't understand that either. Um, and that's what really brought it home for me, the fact that you know this elderly lady had to deal with her husband's death on her own and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't give her a hug. One of the issues that I wasn't aware so, that was so prevalent in the community was things like dementia. So we had concerned neighbours phoning up saying I'm really worried about Mr so-and-so or Mrs X. I don't think they're looking after themselves. So we would arrange food and then the families were going in and going, who's this coming to my mother and father's door? You know, understandably so. And I, I think that's probably the thing that affected me and the main takeaway for me is the impact of other illnesses and how everything stopped during this virus. So, you know, we all went with the best of intentions to help, but obviously families maybe thought, well, who are these people that I can look after my mother or father? Um, so that, that, was, that was particularly sad and hard to deal with. But, you know, once we explained that we were official volunteers, we had, you know, um, everything was getting recorded via the council. Um, that sort of set people's minds at ease. Um, and then sometimes we would actually stop at the request of the families. I think it was the people who were struggling to deal with normal illnesses, so non-corona illnesses such as cancer, dementia. One of my friends, I've now developed a friendship with Anne, she lost her husband during this time and just the restriction um, on families, you know, for funerals and stuff, it's just, it's a terrible way to sort of like, for someone to die and then to say cheerio. Um, so I, I would say the dementia aspect really kind of, I just find that heartbreaking, both for the, the person suffering but also the extended families. At one stage I was shopping for four people and my trolley was like overloaded and I, I get so stressed actually doing it. Uh, and they were just great with me, you know, they would help me, they didn't mind, they would actually pack my shopping. Um, and they were just superb. Um, all the businesses were great and continued to, continue to be great. The, the businesses were fantastic. Like both chemists were great. They would give us prescriptions. We obviously had personal details of the people that we were picking them up for. Um, I've, all, you know, I've nominated the butchers for like a, a local business award. I think, I can't remember what it's called, but because um, we actually got some money from the council um, and when we were delivering food to families, they weren't really getting protein. We weren't allowed to give um, cold meats, etc. Um, so I went to buy gift vouchers from the butchers and they discounted them for us. And um, I thought that was really kind and they did that quite a lot. Um, and that, that totally blew me away. My name's Alistair McFarlane. The business has been established in Stewarton since 1903. I've been running it for oh, since 2003, but I've worked in here for 30 years. The way the community pulled together during this outbreak was quite unbelievable. It was fantastic. You know, you saw the, the best in people during this as people rallied round and, and made sure their neighbours were all right, you know, their elderly friends and everybody was looked after, everybody had supplies. You know, and it's, ah, it's, it goes to show that being part of a community is, is worth something. I don't think that we changed all that much about what we've done daily other than the fact that we couldn't have people in the shop or as many people in the shop, you know, in the distancing and things like that. But, you know, we've done a lot of home deliveries and for people that couldn't get out and things like that. And just for us, it was our day to day normal business. We just wanted to come to work, you know, and we didn't see that we were changing all that much about the service that we were doing. But maybe just more people were using it, I think, and that's what, what maybe made it that wee bit different for us. Oh, we still limit the amount of people that can come in the shop. We're fortunate that we've got quite a big front shop so we can have three people in the shop at the one time um, and we try and not have people waiting as long. You know, we just try and get them served and get them out safely and stuff like that. It's just really about customers feeling confident to come and shop with us. No, we just want to carry on doing what we're doing. You know, and, and hopefully the, the customers appreciate what we do. Places like Gilmartin's adapted, you know, they, they turned from being a baker's to a kind of, um, sort of um, a mini supermarket, so to speak. 
Uh, my name is James Stewart. I, my wife and I founded Gil Martin's Bakery in May 2019. The name of the cafe, Gil Martin's, comes from her maiden name, which was, she was Stephanie Gil Martin, and it's the word Gil Martin's Bakery. We moved to a kind of takeaway only system. At first, we, we had a shop that people could come in, kind of one by one. Then we couldn't even do that, so we moved everything online. Uh, set up a, a new website and got it all, um, got like an online order system, an online shop and everything. People were just really grateful to have something and we were really happy to be able to help. Um, it, was, it was quite natural for us to, to not just, you know, close the cafe and go sit at home. We wanted to be doing something. I think all the businesses responded really well. I'm here for five and a half years and it's a small wee town, people are lovely and most of the times we are like all working together with communities as well, local guys and everybody, so it's good, it's good to be around here, yes. Yes, I did have a chat with my staff and myself and we decided that we will remain open and we will try our best to serve our local community, our people around here. And I'm hoping that we did well, so no complaints so far. What we done on top of that was we have offered our free delivery services to vulnerable people who didn't want to come out. So we have a Facebook page, we display everything there. Whatever you guys need, you can just send us a wee shout, we message, we call, and we just get it delivered free of charge at your place so you don't have to come out if you're scared to come out. Take one. I'm Charlie Gormley, proud owner of Charlie's Gents Hairdressers in Stewarton. I've been trading for 16 years, this is my 16th year in Stewarton. There's a, there's a nice community feel about Stewarton, it's not, it's, it, although it's got bigger than the last 16 years that I've been here, it's certainly, it's certainly uh, still got a small town feel about it, it's nice. The, the only way any high street can survive is if, is if we uh, shop locally, spend the money in the town, don't, don't commute from you know, here to Glasgow to get your haircuts or get your butcher meat. There's plenty of that here, we can all shop locally, keep this town thriving, all the shops open, that's why we want it. There's, I think the last count there was 93 businesses and then without the, the high street. It'd be nice after this, we would still have 93 or more. So it's important that we all shop local. We, we don't go to the big cities to do it. We've got everything here that we need, everything. And yeah, keep on coming by the barrel load. Hi, hi there, my name's Liam Gallagher. I am the chief instructor at Sench Guy Karate Academy, based in Stewarton. We're a community, we're a family club, yeah, we're a family club first and foremost, we're, a, we're almost a, a, a mini community all of our own. We knew it was coming, um, obviously we knew that, that sport was going to be hit, impacted quite heavily and uh, we've got quite a large community across the west of Scotland, maybe over 400 families as part and, and I can consider what that is in the local area. So we automatically kind of looked for new technology to to kind of click in and still service our community. Well, we, we, we ran the Zoom classes, as I said, I tried to keep uh, the routine going as much as possible. My concern was, especially for our younger members, routine was going to collapse with school disappearing and the, the, a lot of the clubs would get, uh, had to close. They didn't have the facilities or the, uh, the abilities that I had. So I tried to keep that as uh, close to real time as possible, if that makes sense. I kept my, my schedule running uh, and that kept uh, the families at home on, in a routine. Um, a lot of we had a lot of uh, positive feedback from our from our families that uh, we actually did uh, more than some of the schools did to kind of keep the kids active um, and uh, kind of in routine. Uh, I'm Anne uh, and I've stayed in the town 30 years. We really just all pulled together to be honest. Uh, who I worked for were very very good. You know what they done and kept us well abreast of what was happening and uh, we all worked together as a team. You know. Yeah, I think there was a lot of people there. I witnessed a lot of people doing things for people and, you know, different things in the town. And just being there for people, basically, to listen to them and, you know, it's a big thing. You know, a lot of people are isolated, a lot of people, even just to go and stand at a window and just say, hope you're doing okay. Uh, this salon I've had for 17 years and I've been hairdressing for 36 years in Stewarton. It's great. It's a really friendly wee place, obviously getting bigger, a lot more houses, um, but shop-wise and everything business-wise, it's, it's a good mixture of shops. It's probably better than, better than a lot of places, but I think we're doing really well in Stuarton. Even though we've cut back in clients, we're still always welcoming new clients, men and women. There seems to be a wee bit of a mix-up that we don't do guys here. 
I think that's a bit, that's the only thing I would say is a wee bit sad that the people that are moving into the town, I think a lot of them are going back to where they stayed and maybe getting hair done and I'm not saying they're just come to us, there's like 13 salons, there's plenty of choice for people. Um, but I think when somebody moves to the town, I think it's good to keep the town the way it is and help the other shops and businesses. Instead of maybe going out with the town or on the way back for work for Glasgow, going in somewhere else. It's amazing what you can get in the town. And you find out the gossip. <laughs> um, I think it's very community spirited, I must be honest. Coming from, I stayed in Paisley, so nobody said hello to you. The first time when I came here, the first morning, somebody said morning, I nearly fell off the pavement. <laughs> because I thought, what? <laughs> Which I thought was nice, you know, for the word go, they didn't know me, but I mean, I just thought, different story now, mind you. <laughs> Once met, never forgotten. <laughs> Well, I, I don't just uh, work here, I live here, and I, I chose to live here as well. I, I, if that makes sense, some people are born into it and they don't realise what they have. I, I've moved down here uh, and built my business and built my community down here, and I, I, I choose to live in Stuart because of the people, because of the, the countryside, because of our surroundings. And we really need to invest in the likes of our high street and our local businesses, because you're not just, I know it's a bit of a cliche, you're not just investing in big business at this point, you really are making a difference in somebody's life. You, uh, I think there's this wee meme that goes around you. You know, you're sending somebody's kid to school. You're putting one, fuel in one of your neighbours' tanks, and that's that needs to be, especially for small towns like this. It needs to have that kind of thinking. And so we're kind of hopeful that people will use the fact that they may now be working from home to kind of um, build that community where they might have just, oh, we live in Stewarton, but all oh, my community is in Glasgow because. You know, I can meet up there, I spend most of my time there. Well, you're spending your time here now and there's a great community to be tapped into. So let's, um, let's build that community uh, and make it even stronger. You can find out more information about Vibrant Communities and the work of the Communities team at the following links.